This meeting is being recorded. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with Taylor, a 10-year veteran of Wall Street. And I just have to ask a couple of questions about FTX. I want to get some, some outside input on what really happened, uh, but also I want to understand what is this like. But before we get started, uh, Taylor, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. I'm I'm excited about this because I'm legitimately pissed off about what's going on. Like this is, there's nothing right. This guy is going to end up in jail and there is nothing that's going to save him from that, except if he winds up in Dubai and can't get extradition back to the United States. But this yeah, is criminal. Yeah. He, yeah, what he has done is criminal. There's no question. So the first thing I wanted to ask is when this started to, to unravel, which is horrible and tragic and illegal and, and all of that. My mind went to, is this like, because I've experienced a lot in my financial career. So I want to give you three scenarios that I know and I've experienced personally and see which one you think this is. You ready? Go ahead. Fire. So one, is this Bernie Madoff, right? Which is the, was the largest Ponzi scheme ever found, was clearly criminal. He died in jail, uh, all of that stuff. Two, was this Enron? which was a company uh, that was fraudulent from the jump, uh, audited by Arthur Anderson, I believe. I could be wrong, but Arthur Anderson doesn't exist because it, it was a big deal, right? Audited public company. Or was this um, Lehman, where functioning company just had too much leverage on one side in an illiquid market, and they couldn't get out, and they went poof. So um, when you look at what you understand today, with what you've read, which one is it? It's one in three. It's Bernie Madoff okay. and it's Lehman. So a lot of this came down to leverage, but it also came down to unethically moving assets from one company to another without the underlying customer knowing it and using that very customer, who's a regular person's dollar, to fund a hedge fund on the other side who's been making shitty, shitty bets on coins that have gone to zero. And now you need to rebuff that balance sheet with the customer's assets. And then what happens from there is as things perpetuate downwards, that problem exacerbates itself over time. And it might be not as egregious to start, but as it gets worse and worse, you have to get more and more criminally involved and liable for the actions that you're doing. Yeah, he, he stole customer money. Uh, there's, there's there's no way around it. There's no way to look at this any other way. Let me let me let me frame it. So he owns FTX, which is a crypto exchange. So on FTX, what people do is they put their money in an FTX account. It's supposed to sit there on the platform and allow them to trade cryptocurrencies. He also owns, and that's that's pretty straightforward. The other side is he owns Alameda, whatever it is, and that's a hedge fund. And what that hedge fund was doing was betting on cryptos. And as those cryptocurrencies, those you know, particular tokens would go down, what he would do was fund the losses with the money from the customers that are on the FTX platform. And so then what happens is the Binance, a competitor of his, the Binance CEO steps in and says, I can see what's on your balance sheet. I personally own, or my company, I'm sorry, Binance, owns something like $5 billion of assets between the FTT token and FTT investment directly, I'm getting the hell out of here because I can see this is a shell account that's taking place right now. And then I'm going to take my money out and he got his money out. And he said, then I'm going to tweet about it. And you're going to get a, a run on the bank. And that's absolutely what happened. And when you run on the bank, what happens is the customer assets got pulled over here into the Almedia account. And then all of a sudden on FTX's platform, boom, the money's not there. They can't liquidate. And all of a sudden they're like, oh, Chapter 11 Oops. bankruptcy. I effed up. You damn right you effed up. You ruined the lot. I mean, you, who knows how much exposure any individual has. And we're always talking about risk management, et cetera. But you know some people had way too much of their money on this platform. And these are regular people. And this is funding a guy that then is living this lifestyle who's worth $16 billion. He's testifying in Capitol Hill in front of Congress telling them how not to allow exactly what he just did. He needs to be wearing orange. That's all I got to say. So there's no, way, I, he's, he, there's no way around it. So I, I want to give full credit to a uh, Twitter account, Lynn Alden. So I'm not in the crypto space. I don't never pretended to be. Uh, 
but I've been in um, been investing for a long time. So I didn't really understand these FTT things and all this gobbledygook. So Lynn Alden put out a series of tweets that I'm going to try to paraphrase and see if it see if it hits. You ready? Yep. I, I, so so full disclosure too. I've done a lot of research on this particular topic. I'm not a crypto guy. So and I and I can also say this. I am a finance guy. I've spent 10 years on Wall Street. I spent eight years in financial classrooms, legitimately eight. I have spent hours and hours and hours trying to figure out crypto. And I have not come away with a logical conclusion as to how it's used, what it's used for, or how it makes sense. So let me just preface this entire statement with that. Yeah. So what we're going to talk about here is uh, what is something called, it's called FTT, which is a coin that FTX created out of thin air. But we're going to change the script. And again, Lynn Alden gets credit for this. We're going to pretend we're McDonald's. And we are going to create clown bucks out of thin air. They're going to be wildly colored. They're going to have Ronda McDonald's face on them. They're just, they're just going to be called clown bucks. And we're going to create a lot of them. We're going to ask our partners, our vendors, to buy some of these, right? These clown bucks. And thus, that's going to establish a price for the clown bucks, right? Not a lot of them but some. And then we're going to take all of these clown bucks that we have created, which we have a lot more of, and we're going to put them on our balance sheet. And now that they have a traded value, we're going to take these clown bucks multiplied by some stupid price that my partners paid, and my balance sheet just got inflated by some gazillion dollars. And then, and then we're going to go out to the market and borrow real dollars. Because we have all these assets and we have no liabilities because we just created shit out of thin air. And I'm going to go get a bunch of debt in cash. And then I'm going to live the high life on this. And then these clown bucks eventually work their way through the system and Starbucks gets some. Starbucks gets to a point where they have enough of them. are like, shit, I want these fucking clown bucks. I'm going to go back to McDonald's and give them my clown bucks and get some cash. He's going to go back to McDonald's, get his cash, and he's going to tell people that he did this, and everybody's going to go back and do a bank run. So again, folks, they created clown bucks, and we were all suckers for it. So that's what Lynn Allen pulled out. Hopefully I captured that correctly. What really, really, really well done on your part reciting it, and I'm sure on her part writing it to begin with, because that is precisely what's happening. What's happening is they fund the back end of these systems with crypto tokens that they issue just, out of thin air. Yep. Exactly right. So think about this though. Like a lot of what goes into that space is VC type money, right? Yeah. So VC money gets plugged into that space. What happens when they start to question the underlying worth of these underlying tokens that are funding underlying projects? There's a contagion effect that could absolutely take place here. What you just realized is that Binance was heavily exposed to FTX. That's why they actually sold that asset to begin with. Who yeah. else is going to come forward and say, Unfortunately, I have to mark down my balance sheet because I had however much FTT token on my balance sheet as well. And it just went from 70 over a year ago to $1.28. I don't know how it's not at zero. It's going to zero. Um, I would bet a lot on that. But yeah. th there's a very interconnected world here. Uh, Gary Gensler, the chairman yeah. of, the C uh, of the SEC, came out last week and he said, if you are buying crypto, he's like, I, I can't tell you what to do. Be careful. Be cautious. Read the disclosures. How many people are doing that? I, I think it's very, very few. Disclosures are, are very no, hard they, to read. It's all legality. They, no, they get addicted. Crypto is the dot com where everybody just got addicted. It was the path to wealth. They were going to change their family trajectory and they went all in. They got lucky. This is what happened. They took a thousand dollar stimmy check. They put it on some exchange and a thousand turned into 10. Wow, that's awesome. Well, this I'm going to go easy. all in. I like this. Yeah. I, see, I, I like, I'm a genius. I'm a genius. What is Warren Buffett doing? I'm a genius. Not only am I going to take that 10,000 and put it right back in, but I'm going to mortgage my house. I'm going to take out of my 401k. I'm going to go all yeah. in. Yep. And now it's gone. Yep. Yeah. And it's funny. Like, I think it's at, so at some point there has to be a use case. If there's no use case ever, and right now, I hate to say this because like I, I'm trying to conceptualize the other side of the trade. I'm trying to figure out who's on the other side of the trade, where it's coming from. The only 
the tangible use case right now seems to be criminal activity. I hate to say it. It's like, you can't buy anything tangible with this. You can transfer money from one person to an X, i.e. the criminal activity, but there's nothing that you can go out and purchase with these assets. Yes, there might be a one-off whatever that you can buy from some website and actually get something tangible out of it. But the only thing that you have is the willingness for someone else to pay a higher or lower price than what you've paid for it because you can't do anything else with it. Oh, the greater fool theory? Would that be what that's called? It's I, I I said I I feel bad because I'm I'm I and I have really good friends that are heavy in this space and I they try to convince me and what they do is they confuse me they don't convince me yeah. they confuse me and yeah they're I think smart there's, people they act yeah. like they're smarter than me and I'm like like this there's like this I don't know they act like they're smarter yeah. and maybe they are and maybe that's why yeah. I can't understand it yeah so I have a buddy I have a, I need to check on him so I have a buddy um who's been in the space for over uh, over ten years. Maybe, 50, I don't know, I guess call it 10 years. Long time. Very deep, eight figures. I mean, he's he's got big, big money put into this. And um, I don't really get it either. But it's okay. I don't have to get it, right? It, for crypto to win, I don't have to understand. You don't have to understand, right? It's not like everybody has to get it. So again, we're, we're, not, the, we're not the target market. So that's totally sure. okay. Um, but I think there, I actually think there will be goodness that comes out of this dumpster fire. My opinion is somebody who's not in the game is crypto will be smaller. There will be less bullshit coins created out of thin air called clown bucks. So that's a good thing. That's a net positive. Um, there will be regulation. There will be, I think there will be some coins, probably Bitcoin being the greatest example that's registered as a commodity regulated by the CFTC. I think that's what it is. Yeah. And, and then there'll and, be and some... It, it, so, so one of the big things that I'm hearing a lot about right now is is the, the tax loss ability on a on a crypto product. Mm -hmm. There's no like there's no wash rule, so you can sell it one nope. one day, be, buy back five yeah. minutes later, and you booked your loss. So yeah, we'll see be if more that. Yeah. I, I can't imagine that's going to persist. But yeah, yeah, keep going. Sorry. So there'll be some some will be called a commodity, and again, not, nothing makes regulation come more than mom and dad losing money. Mom and dad losing money really wakes up Washington. Yep. So Gary Gensler and whoever his peer is in in uh, the commodity exchange, they're going to be. There will be regulation coming. It will be fast, and it will probably be punitive. It will be yeah. rough. And then there'll be some that are securities, right? Because hey, there there's a market for for private equity and stock shares. Who says it has to be a stock? Maybe it's a coin. Okay, fine, right? So I think we're going to see regulation net positive. I think it will be smaller. So if there is a use case. It will come out of these smaller things, and then you and I will be proven wrong. Yeah, yeah, and 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 people will be laughing at us right now and say you don't want Bitcoin at sixteen thousand or whatever it is. But again, I, I, I just, own a coin, so I actually <laughs> took one percent of my net worth and bought crypto like two years ago. So I I have some insurance policy. I never look at it, but yeah, I, I actually own one. So yeah. I like that thought process, and I think I understand what you mean when you say insurance policy. Insurance that if this becomes ubiquitous. You're at least involved, and and if it becomes ubiquitous, then you're going to see a massive run on that asset, and you want to. It, it will be zero exposure. or a lot of money. Right. I'm not in it, and again, I'm not in it for a year. I'm not a trade. Literally bought it two years ago. In fairness, I think I paid 19 grand for it, so I am now down. Um, but when it got to 60 something, it didn't matter. It was one percent. It was an insurance policy that just in case that went to the moon, I got my piece. Yep. And if it goes yep. to zero. 1% of my net worth doesn't kill me. That's yep. all I did. I think that's probably the best, most logical way to think about it. And I, I, you know, I've heard bigger numbers, you know, go to two and a half, go to 5%. Like that's pushing the envelope. I wouldn't do that. But to your point, to look at it as an insurance policy, to look at it, I'm going to own it. And we're going to, you know, ride this way with a very small amount of my assets. Fine. Yeah. So again, I'm in the game. I do think, uh, again, when mom and dad get hurt, regulation comes. Uh, I think this space will no longer be the wild, wild west. Uh, the other thing that I want to throw out to you that I think is a surprise, and I, I haven't put any money yet, but I might this week. So again, have not bought, but might. Coinbase. I heard the CEO, Brian Armstrong, I think his name is, say that only 5% of crypto transactions happened in the United States, which means 95% happened in the Bahamas and all these other money laundering capitals sure. of the yep. world. I suspect in a year, 
it's not five percent. And is, does that happen one of for one of two reasons? Because one, people just learn their lesson, or is it two, it gets regulated back on shore? I think it's both. I think a a lot less transactions, so that's the first pool. So fair, but fair, I, okay. But but I do think I do think being regulated and monitored and having audited financials will have value to people that continue to trade going forward. So again, I could be totally wrong. I have no money in the game. I might buy some shares sometime this week, especially if this if this run happens and coin gets cut another 20 or 30 percent, I will certainly put some money to work. But that's something I'm thinking about. What do you think? Do you think that does that logic tie? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I, I get that. I, I think to your point, like the the, the it's funny. It's funny that that regulation is almost going to now become welcomed in the world where regulation was a four letter word. Yeah, that exactly. was essentially the existence of crypto is to evade. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was, it's funny. Yeah. It, 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 I mean, yeah, it, it was to evade regulation. And now we're like, oh, well, we need bring regulation. It on, it on, if someone it. needs to help me out when some asshole out there rolls the dice, moves my money, and I can't see what's going on in the back end. You want a deregulation. Uh, yeah. It, it, the whole thing is a circle of, I can't understand it. My brain can't get wrapped around it. I'm yeah, sorry well, for the people that are big, big crypto fans. I, I fine. Do your thing. I, you, I'm just, you not do there. you. Yeah. You yeah, do that's you. Right. That's right. There's gotta be a buyer and seller, right? Two party transaction. There you go. Well, Taylor, you do a lot of great stuff, helping the average person figure out what's going on in this crazy times. Where would they find that? Yeah. Find us at life goal investments on Instagram. That's where we try to get people again, just talking about macro education stuff, trying to make sense of confusing topics like this. Yeah. Seth. Thanks buddy. <laughs>